Welcome to my beautiful little PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint presentation like thingy with a little advertisement that I must buy their product, but I refuse to buy their product and I will stick it to the man and not buy it and present you with a mediocre version of what I really wanted to do because it has a little annoying thing around here. I think it's not showing it when I'm recording it. Anyway, this is a story of Roanoke Colony, which according to my subtitle happens to be the most anticlimactic story in history. Why is it anticlimactic? Because people kept trying to do the same thing over and over again and failed miserably every time. And people were extremely stupid about the whole thing because they thought that if they did what other people failed at, they might succeed by doing the exact same things the other people did. Obviously that doesn't work, and nothing really happened in the end. Roanoke Island is a happy little island in North Carolina, in Dare County. And if I zoom in here a lot, and PowerPoint doesn't like responding very well, but I will get it to respond. It takes place in this highlighted area, Dare County, which is named after Virginia Dare, who is the granddaughter of a major character role in this story. And this little island here is Roanoke. This little island there. And you can see why that wasn't supposed to happen. Why it was so desirable by people because of this string of islands in which they could just swim right in here. I guess they didn't swim. They sailed in and were free of ocean currents and every did they do what? Did they do not? That would have happened from being damaged. Here, if I zoom out a little, we have the actual Roanoke Island taken by NASA. A graphic I copied and pasted off Wikipedia. Shape there. <laughs> now, this whole story started with the Virgin Queen, Elizabeth I, who said, You there, you explorer, I want you to go to Roanoke Island in North Carolina and take people there and claim it as ours because we frivolously want more land. And he said, oh, I would love to do your frivolous command. And he took a bunch of men, 107 men, over from this island here of England. And if you look very closely to where my little top pointer is, you can see the string of islands that is eastern North Carolina and deep in there is which is too small to even show is Roanoke Island. Now the hilarious thing about this story is that while Sir Richard Grenville was sailing his men over to Roanoke Island they crashed on a shoal and ruined most of their food supplies. Now He thought that maybe that he could sail back to England and then return to Roanoke and restock the supplies. But however, Spain and England were at war. If I start the presentation here, you can see the most of the English flag, and now my fire flamey thing moves. Anyway, Spain and England were at war. And being a major sailor, Sir Richard Grenville had to stay and fight the war. Now, Sir Francis Drake, who was fighting the war from a different place in St. Augustine, which is in Johns County. It's this little place here. and This is a, a blown-up version of Johns County that also copied and pasted from Wikipedia. If you look very closely, you can see St. Augustine, and England decided to attack this place for very petty reasons, just simply to frivolously prove that they now have that little city in Florida, and Spain doesn't. Now, on his way back, Sir Francis Drake knew that the people in Roanoke Island were having major issues to stop there. 
and they they kind of look like these people. Uh, this is a picture of Gandhi and a picture of Ryan Lieber, two very skinny skinny people. I assume they looked a little like that at that point. Um, so Sir Francis Drake picked them up and took them back to England, and that was the first failed attempt at Roanoke Island. Now the second attempt was with this guy, Sir Walter Riley, who took his colonists over to Roanoke Island, which, in case you forgot what it looks like, here's what it looks like. And Roanoke Island, once again, was a horrible idea going to this place, because not only did they lack in knowledge of plants or geography, they also had no knowledge of the native tribes there, who, by the way, hated the white people because they were taking their land away, which would tick me off, too. And due to horrible relations with the natives and lack of food supplies and being stupid, this also failed. So, of course, if two trips to colonize an island fails, of course you try a third time. And now, uh, John White, not Sir guy apparently wasn't knighted, took a third group over to Roanoke, left, and came back, and oh, guess what, they were gone too, and this is where the famous Croatoan carving in the tree comes in, because there is a word, Croa not words, word, Croatoan carved into an oak tree, and here's a picture of them I'm trying to figure out what the heck is going on, and this looks like a guy reading a book in the background. This guy's pants are too short. And on a, a message board was just simply carved crow, as if they didn't have enough time to carve it, or were too lazy to finish it. And there is a little sign they had going on. Now, this is called a Maltese cross. And you may recognize it, you may not, but the most popular image of a Maltese cross was, is of the fire department, fire department symbol. And this specific case has nothing to do with a, with a giraffe, but it's hard to find a Maltese cross on, on the internet. So this is another one I find on Wikipedia. Now the whole subject of this little presentation is to try to figure out what the heck was going on. Why did these people just disappear off the island when John, came, when John White came back? figure them out. I'm confusing my colors here. I'm with John Green. Anyway, we have a few hints about where the people went. They just disappeared. And I totally didn't finish my Maltese crossing. What would happen if they, they were in danger? If they were forced to leave or something bad happened when they left? Other than for passive reasons, like running out of food and having to go on and find something. Or simply just getting bored and going somewhere else because, you know, apparently colonists do that. Just, that's what colonizing is. Getting bored with your place and going and taking somebody else's place. So we're trying to figure out where they went. And the word Croatoan came up. And there was actually um, two things that could have been with the Croatoan. There's, at the time, this little island. I'll zoom in on it a lot. I was about to say a little, but zooming in on it a lot, for your sake, viewers. Um, now it's apparently called... Duck Island, but Croatoan Island was what they called it right there. And the whole purpose of Croatoan Island was because it had the Croatoan Indians on it. They weren't even all there. But they happened to have a few, uh, few inside jobs in there of people who might have accepted them to their tribe. And another hint we have is they had horrible relations with the natives. I mean, they natives just hated them. They could have been attacked. Um, the lack of knowledge of the area, the people were horribly stupid. Um, they were probably pretty stupid, considering they failed this twice, just emphasizing on how stupid they were. Um, no bodies were recovered. No bodies were recovered, so there probably wasn't a massacre, unless the Indians 
move their bodies after. If I were to massacre a bunch of people, I would probably at least burn or bury their bodies because it's, it's creepy. And probably during a war, and I would at least respect people I'm fighting. So theory number one about what happened is the colonists just left. This is a very plausible theory because they would probably just die after. I mean, no bodies were recovered because of major hurricane conditions. And when John White finally came back and found them, um, they, they, they couldn't move on to Croatoan Island to go look there because the weather was bad and they had to leave. They knew a hurricane was coming. Um, so it's a very plausible theory. Theory number two, the whole population was killed by disease. This is extremely implausible simply because no bodies were recovered. Um, theory number three, a hurricane destroyed, <laughs> I wrote eight, oops, destroyed the colonists. This is also false because um, many paintings, what they had for documentations back then, um, showed that buildings um, were still up. There was actually a painting of them walking by a totally intact fence, which would show that a hurricane most likely did not destroy that. Also, um, weather patterns showed that didn't even research weather patterns, nor what I just said. Theory number four, the colonists were all turned into zombies. Plausible. Now you may laugh that I even brought this up, although this is much more realistic than a hurricane eating them. Um, you never denied that. The colonists being turned into life, uh, zombies. Now the theory behind zombies is that considering that they can't heal or regenerate their flesh, a zombie could really move for two years. And so by the time John Green came back, John Green, screw it up again, John White came back. Oh, Virginia Dare, the one I talked about. Um, Dare County being named after, that's John White's granddaughter. Anyway, um, the natives, if there were zombies, the natives were already taken off that colonists and probably would have killed them, considering they were diseased. Most likely would have burned the bodies. Um, there were reports of people going into a forest of what the natives called cursed not coming back so they could have been turned into zombies nobody really ever came back when they went to that forest so it could have just been filled with zombie animals which of course we can't have zombie animals because nothing weighs less than a human can survive zombification totally just made that up anyway the Croatonian Indians killed the colonists that would make sense as the Croatoans hated them. There could have been a war started. Um, this is plausible, although the weakness in this is that there is no Maltese cross found. Although it could have just been carved into a tree that was destroyed. So, again, the Maltese cross signaled that there was an issue happening or a danger that drove them away. Theory number six, which is the most plausible. Um, the colonists sought refuge with the Cho Choanoke Indians. Um, now, the Choanoke Indians were the most peaceful tribe of Indians they met, and um, there were reports of several um, um, higher-up Choanoke Indians developing good relations with white people. Um, this is actually in a book totally forgot what the book was, it'll say it in the bibliography, that the um, earlier, or the later settlers, what were their names? What were their names? The famous ones, the ones that settled here in, on that rock. Anyway, they found white people already there, confused white people living with Indians. Anyway, that concludes my project. I will show you anything I forgot to do after this.